Hello and thank you for joining us for the second part in this series, an introduction to high dynamic range for onset production from LIDA. My name is Kevin Salvage. I'm the European Regional Development Manager for LIDA based in London in the UK. And if you have any questions concerning this presentation or any LIDA products, please don't hesitate to contact me on the numbers below. So today we're going to talk about wide colour gamut. But what is wide colour gamut? A colour gamut, also known as a colour space, is a range of colours found on the visual spectrum. Particular colours, and one variation each of red, green and blue, are established as the boundaries of a given range of any colours that are found within those limits are considered part of that space. Colour gamuts are created by the telecommunication standards organisations and establish specifications for the display devices. To meet a given colour gamut specification, the display must be capable of displaying all the colours included in the colour space. So, how do we display colour space? Well, Pink Floyd had a method of displaying it, but it's not really practical in day-to-day -day operation. So, Today, we use the CIE colour chart, and this was developed to display the entire visible spectrum of colours to the human eye. Chart on the left is the 1931 version, and the chart on the right is the 1976 version. But what are colour gamut standards? At present, there are three main colour gamuts that are used by display device manufacturers. The first one being BT709, and this is what television has used for many years. There is also a standard for digital cinema, DCI-P3, which is slightly wider than 709. And finally, the new UHD standards come with a new colour space, REC 2020, which is designed for future proofing and covers up to 75.8% of the CIE colour chart. At the same time, the Academy for Colour Encoding Systems has also been working on colour gamuts and their standards are rapidly gaining adoption within the industry for colour management throughout the life cycle of a motion picture or television production. The image capture through editing, VFX, mastering, public presentation, archiving and future remastering ACES ensures a consistent colour experience that preserves the filmmaker's creative vision. So the first of the ACES standards is 2065-1 and with its generously placed AP0 primaries, it not only covers the entire visible colour range, but also areas that are not visible to the human eye, with the aim of being prepared for future developments. But this is somewhat unwieldy and can cause problems with render engines. So they've also developed an ACES CG colour space that uses the AP1 primaries and provides a wider colour space than 2020 and is much more plausible for use when rendering. So until the advent of the new UHD displays, the standard for colour video transfers has largely remained unchanged based upon the capabilities of the old CRT monitors. As a result of the limitations, all high definition transfers are created using an 8-bit video depth, REC 709 color space, and a peak brightness of 100 nits. The new UHD displays now allow transfers to be created using 10-bit video depth and a wider color space. The final aspect of the new standard is the addition of HDR which means using a much brighter, higher peak luminance than 100 nits when creating new transfers. So how do we work with this? So HDR and color space is often referred to as color volume. And here on the right, courtesy of Sony, we have a chart where the CIE color chart has been laid flat and the 709 triangle and its 100 nit volume have been displayed. 
Then we have the 2020 standard, which can go up to 10,000 nits. So you can see why the term colour volume is very apt for describing these new standards and how they can be displayed. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.